Good morning students. Today I will be explaining you objects of verbs as well as two types of verbs that are based on the objects. And this is what we have done in the notebook so far. Okay. Now verbs definition. Just a quick recap. What are verbs? A verb is an action word. It can describe a physical state of being. That means the main verb, the action verb or it also describes a mental state. Now mental state includes all the actions that do not necessarily involve the movement of your body physically. For example, certain actions like thinking. Can you see someone thinking as such? No, because it is a process that is going inside their body. Okay, in sleeping. Now sleeping, your body is not physically moving, right? So these are mental states. And then you have a state of being. State of being includes all the helping verbs or the auxiliary verbs that we have done so far. So understood? Verbs include action words which includes physical actions like running, eating, drinking. Then mental state. Mental state includes actions in which your body is not visibly moving like thinking, sleeping, dreaming. Then you have all the uh, state of being which includes the helping verbs or the auxiliary verbs which help the main verb perform the action like we had done the other day. Auxiliary verbs include be verbs, is am are, was were, have verbs, have has had, do words, do does did and the modals which include words like should, shall, could, might, must. Understood? Okay. Now moving ahead. Subject, verb and objects. Now before explaining you the types of objects, let's have a quick look at what a sentence basically includes. Now every sentence has three things. One is the subject. What is a subject? Who or what performs the action is the subject. So a person or a thing that is doing the action is the subject. For example, he paints posters. Now who is doing an action here? He. So he is the person who is performing, performing an action. So he is the subject. Then verb. Every sentence has a verb. So what is a verb? Like we have studied uh, before, a verb is a word that expresses what that action is. So verb is the main action that the subject does. He paints. Paints is a physical action. So paints is a verb. Object. Now what is an object? Whoever or whatever receives that action is the object. Understood? That means one is the subject. Subject is doing an action and whosoever receives that action is a object. He paints posters. What does he paint? Posters. He is doing an action on the posters. So posters are the object here. Understood? Every sentence most of the times has a subject, has a verb. Sometimes they have objects, sometimes they don't have objects. Okay? Now, there are two types of objects, direct objects, indirect objects. Now, what are direct objects? In order to find the direct object, there are two questions you must ask. Now, whenever you are asked to underline or find out a direct object in a sentence, these are the two things that you need to ask yourself. That will make things easier for you. Does the sentence have an action verb? That means, does your sentence have a proper physical verb, a main verb, principal verb or an action verb? The sentence must have an action verb in order to have a direct object. If a sentence does not have an action verb, there will be no direct object in that sentence. So, having an action word in a sentence is necessary for you to find a direct object. Understood? Second important thing, who or what receives the action of the verb? Now, once you have found the action in the sentence, now you have to ask yourself, who is receiving that action or what is receiving that action? The answer will give you the direct object. So, two things are important. One is, whenever you have to find the direct object, there has to be an action in the sentence. Secondly, there has to be a receiver of that action. It can be a person also, it can be a thing also. 
Now, direct object examples. Our cat caught a mouse. Our cat is the subject. Is there a verb here? Is there an action word here? Yes, caught. So, our cat caught what? It caught a mouse. A mouse is a direct object. Mouse is receiving the action caught. Understood? The boss saw her in town. The boss is the subject. Is there an action word here? Yes, saw. What does the boss see? The boss saw her. So, her is the direct object. Her is receiving the action saw. Understood? These are the direct objects in sentences. Now, indirect objects. I kicked Sally the soccer ball. Now, how do you find indirect objects? First, determine if the sentence has a direct object. That means, whenever you have to find an indirect in, uh, object in a sentence, first you have to see whether there is a direct object or not. Because for an indirect object, direct object has to be there. It is compulsory. Then, is there an action verb in the sentence? Clear? Now, I kicked Sally the soccer ball. Is there an action verb in this sentence? Yes. Kicked is the action verb, right? Next, who or what is kicked? Now, who or what is kicked? The soccer ball was kicked, right? I kicked Sally the soccer ball. So, soccer ball is something that is kicking. Exactly. So, therefore, soccer ball is the direct object. What is being kicked? Soccer ball. Soccer ball is the direct object. So, we have two things here. We have the action verb also. We have the direct object also in this sentence. Clear? We have the action verb kicked. We have a direct object soccer ball here. Okay? Now, if there is a direct object, then ask to whom, to what or for whom or for what was the action done. Now, action is done to somebody. Or the action is done for somebody. So, you have to ask these questions to yourself. Now, if you have seen the sentence, we have found that I kicked Sally the soccer ball. It has a verb also kicked. It has a direct object also, soccer ball. Now, let's try to found, find what the indirect object is. To whom was the soccer ball kicked? The soccer ball was kicked to Sally. Understood? Subject did an action on an object and that object was given to somebody or that object was done for something. Clear? So, the soccer ball was kicked to Sally. Therefore, Sally is the indirect object. I kicked Sally the soccer ball. I hope you have understood the difference. Now, indirect object examples. He hit the ball to marry. Now, he is the subject. Is there a, a verb here? Yes, hit. What did he hit? He hit the ball. Ball is a direct object, right? And ball was hit to whom? Marry. Marry is the indirect object. Clear? Mary sold Tom some lemonade. Now, there is a action verb here, sold. There is a direct object also. What was sold? Lemonade. Now, to whom was lemonade sold? Tom. Tom is the indirect object. The teacher assigned Sally and Mike homework over the weekend. Teacher is the subject. Can you see a action word here? Yes, assigned. What was assigned? Homework was assigned. So, homework is the direct object. And to whom was homework assigned? Sally and Mike. So, Sally and Mike will be your indirect objects. Understood? Now, the action is performed over something. That is direct object. And for whom or to whom that action is done, that is the indirect object. Okay. Now, let's see one more uh, difference. I sent Mary some flowers. I is the subject. Sent is the verb. And... What did I send? Flowers. Flowers is the direct object. To whom did I send the flowers? Mary. Mary is the indirect object. I sent some flowers to Mary. 
Now see the placement of indirect object can change also sometimes. It can come in the beginning or it can come towards the end of the sentence. I is the subject. There is an action word also sent. What did I send? Some flowers. Flowers is the direct object. To whom was the were the flowers sent? To Mary. Mary is the indirect object. Okay. Now moving ahead. Now there are two kinds of verbs which are based on the direct and indirect objects. They are known as transitive verbs and intransitive verbs. Now what are transitive verbs? Transitive verbs are the action verbs that have an object to receive the action. So whenever there is an object in a sentence, those verbs will be known as transitive verbs. Verbs which will always have an object. I bake some cookies. Verb is bake. What do I bake? Cookies. So there is a direct object cookies. So this is a transitive verb. I ride the bicycle. There is an action. Ride. What do I ride? Bicycle. So bicycle is a, uh, sorry, uh, ride is a transitive verb. I move the chair. Move is the verb. What am I moving? Chair. So there is an object also. So all these verbs which have an object after them, they are known as transitive verbs. Intransitive verbs are action verbs, but unlike transitive verbs, they do not have an object. So intransitive verbs are the verbs where there is no object. For example, I laugh. So laugh, after laugh, there is no object. So laugh is an intransitive verb. I cry. There is no object after cry. It is an intransitive verb. The book falls. Now book is the subject. Falls is the verb. But there is no object after falls. What did the book fall on? There is nothing after it. So falls is an intransitive verb. Okay. Now let's quickly have a look one last time. Difference between transitive and intransitive verbs. Uh, I'd like to speak with you. This is transitive. Whom would I like to speak? You. So there is a object here. So speak is a transitive verb. If I would say let's speak. Now there is no object after speak. Then speak will be intransitive. We are reading your new book. Reading is the action. What are we reading? New book. We have an object. So reading is a transitive verb. We are reading. There is no object after reading. Here reading is intransitive. Ed cancelled the reservation. What did Ed cancel? After verb there is an object reservation. So cancel this transitive here. Ed cancelled. After cancel there is no object. So cancel this intransitive here. I agree with you. With whom do I agree? You. There is an object. So it is transitive. I agree. Agree, after agree there is no object. So it is a, it is an intransitive verb. I hope you understood the difference. Please go through all these slides once again to understand what we have done till now. That will make things easier for you to proceed to newer topics in this chapter. Thank you.